Hey there, Detroit sports fanatics. I'm Taylor Phillips, and welcome to Taylor's Detroit Sports on Spreaker. You can also find this and all other episodes of Taylor's Detroit Sports on iHeartRadio. Straight and full Detroit and Michigan sports coverage 100% of the time. If you have any opinions on everything that's going on in the Detroit sports world, call in or send a text message live on the show at 231-429-3668. Also, you can add me on Facebook as Taylor Phillips online at facebook.com slash taylorgatorphillips14. Like my Facebook page, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports page. Join my Facebook group, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports Group. And follow me on Twitter at DT2Phillips with two L's. And this is episode 114 on Spreaker and iHeartRadio. Oh, guidelines to pass along to you first before we, uh, before we get started. Uh, if you're going to text in to the show live, please text your name and town and state if you're out of, if you're out of Michigan if you're away from the state of Michigan and keep it clean keep it very clean so let's just go ahead and rev this engine on the on this podcast So we start off with the Red Wings and Blue Jackets game from Joe Louis Arena. It was scoreless, and there was and there was no scoring whatsoever through 65 minutes of regulation and overtime hockey. So the game had to go to a shootout, goalless. The Red Wings in. The, The Red Wings penalty killing unit in the first period did not allow a shot on goal against the Blue Jackets' fifth-ranked power play unit in the NHL thus far this regular season. And, And the shots were even through 65 minutes at 30 apiece. So on to the shootout. Cam Atkins the Red Wings decided to defer and let the Blue Jackets shoot first and the Jackets Columbus went with Cam Atkinson against Jimmy Howard who went into the, went into the shootout nine goals of tw- allowed on, on a, in his previous 12 shots on goal in the in the past in 12 in the first 12 shots on goal against him the last the last five thereof he didn't even touch but the the last five of the of the first 12 he did not touch one went, again one went wide the other four went in cam atkinson was just barely stopped by jimmy howard who finally made a save. Brock's cheer. Then on came Paddle Datsuk. And he deeped and he back one and he backhanded one past Sergei Bobrowski to give the Red Wings a 1-0 shootout lead. Then, then on came Ryan Johansson. And he he deeped in and scored on Jimmy Howard. So 
same way Jimmy Howard gave up that last uh, shootout goal against the Florida Panthers last week Friday. To lose in that shootout, two nothing in two rounds and three to two in the game. So it was tied at one in the shootout with Gustav Nyquist coming up next, and Nyquist hit the crossbar. That's just bad luck. I mean, Nyquist had uh, Bobrowski beaten. That was with a lot of effort. But the accuracy was just a little bit off, needless to say. So, the Blue Jackets decided to put in one Boone Jenner, of all people. And he, he scored the same way Ryan Johansson scored to give the Blue Jackets a 2-1 lead. Howard, in, his, in those last two shots, was just standing still, looking so completely confused and not even ready. to even make a save. I mean, the first shot, Howard barely stopped with a lot of effort. But then in the second and third shot, he looked completely dumb. Howard got off to a, to a hot start, but collapsed all of a sudden. He has now allowed 11 goals on 15 shots on goal in the shootout this season thus far. And the Red Wings were down to one shooter, and Mike Babcock, of all head coaches, decided to put in Henrik Zetterberg, who was only, who had only one shot, shootout shot this season and shot it well wide and Zetterberg just miser miserably shot it to, to Sergei Bobrowski giving zero effort to score and Bobrowski made an easy save Oh my goodness. That is just plain miserable. By the way, there's also a chat window that is open on this podcast live. Just make sure to keep keep all your content clean. And makes sense too. Don't say anything silly. Here's a tip for you. With that, the Blue Jackets won one nothing in the game and two to one in the shootout in three rounds. I thought I thought it was a good idea for Mike Babcock to defer and, and put Howard to an early test. Just to say just to see what he's really made it what he's really made of in the shootout. And Howard looked good on the first shot, making 
making a sprawling save with his pad. But since then, all of that disappeared on the second and third shots. And he went back to deja vu all over again. Not even trying to touch the puck. Just looking so confused in his crease, in between the pipes. The overtime and regu the regulation and overtime portions of the game were very, very exciting. Ad admittedly, the shots were exactly even at 30 shots apiece. The game went back and forth. Let me start by uh, explaining the Red Wing shootout woes. Pavel Datsuk has been the only goal scorer this season. Gustav Nyquist has scored just two of seven, two goals of seven shots in the shootout this season. Not too bad, but still not good enough. And instead of putting Tomas Tatar in the shootout like he usually does, Mike Babcock put in Henrik Zetterberg, who is awful, still awful in the shootout. Which makes me think, oh my god, come on. I mean, Tomas Tatar isn't, hasn't done too well in the shootout uh, either. But Henrik Zetterberg, he is worse, way worse, than all shooters on the Red Wings roster in the shootout. Uh, for for the shootout haters out there, I'll reach I'll reach out to them after I'm done. And Jimmy Howard still can't touch the puck in general. Eleven goals of fifth, eleven goals on fifteen shots against him thus far this season. What a mess. Total mess. Howard needs to be ready for each and every shootout shot. Each and every shot in the shootout. He's overthinking almost every shot this season. He, he just needs to lose his mind and lose himself and just move and react just the way a quarterback does in football. It's that simple. It's not that hard. It's not hard at all. I also think that that the NHL should allow all teams coaches, including Red Wings head coach Mike Babcock, to change goaltenders prior to the shootout by his own power. And 
I also think the NHL should also allow all coaches, including Babcock, to put in scoring, uh, to put in, to put defensemen in the shootout if they can score by his own power as well. But that's also up to the defensemen themselves to make their choice if they feel like they're ready. If they simply want, if they simply want to be in the shootout. They're the ones that should fess up. As of right now, the fans are, are, are still wondering as if they simply don't know whether or not it is legal. It, it, it is whether or not is it, it is okay for the league to allow such things, especially goaltender changes prior to the shootout. It's almost as if the whole world is asking why, and nobody knows except the league themselves. I might have to uh, private message the NHL's official Facebook page and ask if it's legal to if it's legal for the league to allow coaches to change goaltenders prior to the shootout. Especially because Jimmy Howard has allowed 11 goals on 15 shots, like I've mentioned a couple times before on this podcast, on episode 114 on Spreaker, Taylor's Detroit Sports, and Peter Morazic had stopped all three shots in the shootout this season thus far, all against the New Jersey Devils on the road. And Jonas Gustafsson? I might, I might have to look look up his his shootout stats. Pitched a, he did pitch a shutout in overtime against Toronto at home at one point when the Wings won one nothing on Zetterberg's overtime goal with 7.8 seconds to go or 8.7 to go. Yeah, that's yeah 8.7. That's what that's what it was. Uh. Now to all the fans who hate the shootout, especially Matt Derry. Who I hear keep on Twitter keeps whining and crying that that the shootout should be gone. I've heard, I've heard it like several times and it's driving me crazy. Baby, how long are you going to keep whining like a child? You're just a crybaby, a coward. Yeah. Yeah, and for anybody that, to anybody that's recommending, recommending me to watch Red Wings live, Mickey York was on there, and and he's more of a crybaby. How long are you going to keep whining like a child? You're just a crybaby, a coward. And Matt Derry is. But here, but here's the. But anyway, here's here's my proposition, and I want to be fair. Here, if you want, 
if you want uh, more overtime, here's this. How about the four on four for five minutes like it always has, and then three on three for five minutes or ten or ten minutes if necessary, and then a shootout. Because there still has to be a winner. And ties never settle anything. Although it's the regular season. I may be personally comfortable with the tie, but... It, it, it's boring. It's starting to bore me out. It, it's like... It's like uh, a hockey game that's like canceled in an automatic tie, like in Little League. And the f and the f and I hear more fans wanting ties, wanting the tie back in the NHL. What's your problem there, pal? Can a guy get a bit of sleep? Don't bug me! The tie will never come back in the NHL. Period. There still has to be a winner. But, again, my proposition, four on four for five minutes, and then three on three for five or ten minutes, and then a shootout. That way, my point of it is that way, shootouts in the NHL don't occur as much as they do right now. Is that fair? I think it. I think it's fair. Now I want to go a little outside the box in terms of the Red Wings roster. Jonathan Erickson, of all people, has been a defenseman for the Detroit Red for the Detroit Red Wings for like seven or eight years. And lately he is becoming way more of a bust. Than almost everyone is. He's almost a he almost a, he's almost as, as big of a bust as Dan Cleary is. He's almost as big of a bust as Brian Lashoff is. Well, Lashoff should be sent down to GR, to, to the Grand Rapids Griffins. Erickson plays poorly defensively. Zero goals, seven assists, I get that. But for anyone to to uh, name him one of the top four defensemen. That is so asinine. I want you here. What's your problem there, pal? Can a guy get a bit of sleep? Don't bug me. In my perspective, there is no top four defenseman. Forget the coach's charts. Don't and don't just look at the statistics. Look at what each defenseman has done defensively if you watch the games more clearly. Brendan Smith and Jakob Kindel. Brendan Smith and Jakob Kindel. They have played better defensively than Jonathan Erickson has. Jonathan Erickson turns the puck over way too many times and he snoozes on defense. He snoozes on defense too many times. Smith and Kindle, they don't snooze. 
on, on defense, and they don't turn the puck over as many times as uh, Erickson does. That's my point of wanting Jonathan Erickson traded somewhere. I, I recommend that the Red Wings trade Jonathan Erickson to the Arizona Coyotes for defenseman Keith Yandel. He's a real scoring defenseman and, and he can definitely make the top four. There are a couple of there are a couple of other options out there. Jack Johnson is a defenseman. Jeff Moss from the Detroit Sports Rag won wanted a trade for Jack Johnson. Why tr why not trade Erickson to Columbus for, for Johnson? Or maybe trade Erickson to Buffalo and the Sabres for Tyler Myers. Jonathan Erickson is a bust. He needs to go. I am sick of him making way too many dumb mistakes, whether it's turnovers, whether it's snoozing up, not paying attention on defense, just standing, just standing there like a bump on a log. Erickson's become the uh, Erickson's playing more like a Bush League defenseman. Get him off the roster now. Trading him is the best option. Releasing him, I don't know, that's not quite worth the money, but just any way you get rid of Jonathan Erickson. He is the poorest defenseman out there. He, he plays poorly on defense. Every time I wa watch him, I'm like... I'm like, why was he... Why was he not paying attention? Erickson also has too many, has recorded too many penalty minutes. He has taken way too many penalties. Not that it's tr driving me crazy or anything, but that's another one of his flaws. Again, the shootout's not going anywhere. It may occur less if, if there's four on four and then three on three and, and then still the shootout. But, but Jimmy Howard still not making enough saves and the shooters have to score more. Detsu it, has been like the only shooter that has scored the most goals that scored more, more goals than everybody on the roster has in the shootout. Everybody, everybody else needs to, to start stepping up again. Zetterberg should never be in the shootout again. Put Tatar back in. Or put fresher, fresher and different players on the roster in the shootout. 231-429-3668 is the number to call or text in. Keep keep it clean, name in town. 231-429-3668. I hope you're listening live. And if you are, thank you. Thank you very much. 
What's your opinion on the Red Wings? I'd like to hear from you. The Red Wings don't play until Friday at Joe Louis Arena, a.k.a. Hockey Town. against the New York Islanders who are 21, 10, and 0, second place in the Metropolitan Division. They are 9 and 0 against the Red Wings at the, at the Joe. Julian Tavares guys to watch. He recently speared Marek Zitlitsky in the groin with his stick. I got that from a, a GIF article, according to a GIF, a GIF article brought to you by the Score mobile app and the score.com. Zitlitsky plays for the New Jersey Devils. Tavares was taking uh, was attempting to take a pass through the neutral zone when Devils defender Merrick Zitlitsky stepped up and tripped him. Zitlitsky appeared to be just standing in standing his ground and there certainly wasn't anything dirty about his positional play. But Tavares took exception to it and gave the Devils puck mover a spear to the nether regions. So take a look at the video here. Anyway, uh, Red Wings Islanders, Friday at 7.30 on Fox Sports Detroit. With Ken Daniels and Mickey Redman. The Red Wings uh, have 42 points after get, getting one, getting just one again. in another mediocre shootout loss. Deja, or a deja vu shootout loss. You can catch all, all the games on the, all the Red Wings games on the radio, on the Detroit Red Wings Radio Network affiliates including the flagship station 97 won the ticket in Detroit and Southfield with Ken Cal and Paul Woods on the call. Let's move on to uh, other Detroit sports. The Pistons play the Dallas Mavericks tomorrow at 7.30 at the Palace. On Fox Sports Detroit, George Blaha and Greg Kelser on the call on TV and on Detroit Sports 105.1 and the Pistons Radio Network affiliates with Mark Champion and Rick Mahorn on Detroit Sports 105.1.com and on the Detroit Sports 105.1 mobile app on your smartphone. 
WNGCFM HD1 and also on Tune On Rin- on Tune In Radio on Detroit Sports 1051 HD1. The Mavs are 18 and 8, 18 and 8, and, and in sixth place in the Western the Western Conference. They have won seven out of seven out of their last three. The Pist- uh the Mavericks have won, and the the Mavericks are on a one game winning a one game winning streak. If you prefer, the Pistons come came off a one a crushing one thirteen a one thirteen to ninety one loss to the Clippers after Andre Drummond got got a technical foul. For arguing a blown goaltending goal call late in the first quarter after the Pistons got the ball, continued getting the ball rolling after winning after winning the, uh, lat, their other two games in Phoenix and and in Sacramento last weekend to snap their 13-game losing streak, they are now five and 20 and are trying to climb out of the Sutter like. Like uh, Bob Euchre, aka Harry Doyle from Major League, from the movie Major League, would say. Also, Michigan State, the Spartans, ranked 25th in the in the nation, play Eastern play the Eastern Michigan Eagles at Breslin Center at, at nine o'clock. The Central, Michigan, the Central Michigan Chippewas visit the Northwestern Wildcats in Evanston tomorrow at 8 o'clock on the, on the Chippewa Sports Network with Don Shido. That is on that is on BTN to go and BTN.com. And the Detroit Mercy Titans visit Central Florida. Is five and four in the AAC. The Titans are, are six and four in the Horizon League. And again, Michigan does not play until Saturday at noon against Southern Missouri. SMU, Southern Missouri or SM or Southern Mississippi. Uh, the Oakland Golden Grizzlies play don't play until Saturday at four at at the Pittsburgh Golden Panthers, of the Pittsburgh Panthers. And that's, that, that covers all Detroit and Michigan sports. No Lions updates for tonight, I'm afraid. And no Tigers updates either. So that's going to wrap it up for Taylor's Detroit Sports Episode 114 on Spreaker and iHeartRadio. Thanks for listening and downloading this podcast. I will talk to you again tomorrow night for Episode 115 on Episode 115 after uh, after... After the Michigan State Eastern Michigan game concludes, that is on BTN at at nine o'clock 
and on the Spartan Sports Network with Will Team and Gus Kanakis and Matt Matt Stein Steininger on the call and all the Spartan Sports Network radio radio affiliates. Again, so on behalf of all Detroit sports teams and all and all the fans out there, this is Taylor Phillips, your host, saying signing off, saying TTFN, ta-ta for now.